Um, we went through the toolbox, and it's, uh, it's a lot of models, it's a lot of information. Um, and it's, yeah. So we want to, and then we're going to go the, through the, the information about the multiple choice test. So we want to start it by actually asking you to reflect on what you have learned the last six weeks by reading the books, having the talk shows and the wrap-ups and the case analysis with the TAs and what we did this morning. What we want to ask you is what have you learned so far in the light of the multiple choice? Like, what do you think you know now uh, that will get you through the exam and that might help you in life later on when you will join a company and we'll have to deal with the stuff we talked about in Timo. I have no voice left. So. No, okay. So maybe you can spend two minutes with your neighbor yes. and think about what have you actually learned in, uh, in the light of the multiple choice test next week. And then uh, following up on that, what, uh, do you have any doubts? Um, yes. So if you're aiming for a 12 next week, then you should be able to actually repeat what Julia said for the last hour and a half. Uh, and if you're aiming for a lower grade, then of course you'll know less. But um, yeah, that's a, one of an assessment technique that you ask students which grade do we want to get, and then you ask them what have you learned. So we don't ask you for the grade, but we ask you what have you learned. Um, and then we would know maybe where, or we should know where we should maybe tell something extra from the curriculum. So could you spend two minutes with your neighbor and just try to reflect, okay, what have you learned? I don't expect you to repeat a certain model, but at least, you know, what we talked about in the iceberg, different with the where, uh, the, the why and the what and the how, um, particular subjects, etc. So please give us some input about what you've learned and then, uh, and where you have doubts. Very good, you're still talking, means you learn a lot. Um, 
Who wants the cube? I can just throw it, but... <laughs> yeah, we can do it the, the hard way or the, the nice way, yeah. Somebody wants to start. What about the two of you? No, I saw that you were talking. <coughs> we're not going to do the exam. We just want to hear, I mean, what have you... What are the take-home messages from the first six weeks? What have you learned so far? Or are the things where you still find it tricky or things that you have doubt about? <coughs> what have I learned? Um, okay, business model canvas. Could you uh, have the mic close to you? Ah, oh, pardon. Uh, business model canvas, um, SWOT analysis, yeah. basically, um, I don't know the names for it, but the... Yeah, basically, the stuff which... Uh, the, the toolbox could, was yeah, much the, more useful, like, it was all condensed, so <laughs> we were using that, but I'm not familiar with the names for it so no no uh, we're not asking you for the no, names but what I hear that you can you think about is basically you have the business model canvas and the the business discussions or the models related to that mm -hmm. is that then to say that the organizational theory models I mean the what we have in the contemporary management is that what you find uh, more difficult <coughs> so when we talk about motivation and structure and processes, so the content of the star model, is that what you find difficult or is more tricky to use or is more difficult to understand than the one we have in the business model? <coughs> okay. I don't know really. No. Like, um, I think the, bo the other book is... Um Written a bit differently than the other one. Sorry? The the other book, yeah, this one. Yeah, the business model canvas, yeah. yes? Yeah, this one's written a bit differently than the other one. Maybe, yeah. It's two very different types of books, yes? Yeah, that's but I true. I think the other one is just easier to read. Okay. Yes? Thanks. So that's pretty much it. Yeah. Others who would like to contribute? So we've, yes, there's one over here. If you can throw that far. Uh, what? Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, you okay. can just throw it. Oh, you know, <laughs> Not a good idea. <laughs> so we were talking about the test, and we were thinking that you know, if the test is only about the models and how to use the models, we are we feel very ready. But if it's about orcluary uh, quibbling. You know, just really having to get the exact right definitions, then it might be a bit more difficult, and especially if there comes some trick question like, this rule that was passed down in this and this age, what did that actually do? Mm. Um, and those kind of questions that aren't, that they're kind of related to what we are studying in the books, but n won't be at all applicable to our assignments, mm. those kind of questions we'll quite likely fail at. So if, the, if it's mainly about the, the models and the application of the models, we think we're ready. Okay, good to hear. No, yeah, what I can say is that the test that you've had the last four weeks in the, after the four talk shows, the ones that you've had in the afternoon, all these questions are taken from the, um, you can say, the catalog of questions or test questions that we have as teachers regarding this book. So they are similar. They might be a bit more difficult because we've chosen high-end questions, um, but they are related to this. So we would not expect you to be very, very detailed or, of course, we have trick questions, we have not questions, etc. I also think we have some analytical questions, um, but it's related to the curriculum and, and we're not trying to not make you pass, but we're trying to ensure that you actually learn something so they should be related to what you've learned so far, what we've, uh, what we've asked you to read or asked you to study and work with in the afternoon. So I would then expect that uh, when you think you're ready, then you're ready. So that's good. Are there, yes? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just surprised because you just highlighted one book. All the MCQs are from just uh, that essentials of contemporary management. Oh, what about the, the other one? Yeah, you will, there will be questions from this book. Yeah. And there and will be questions from this book. Okay. Yes, both of them. But what I said is that the questions that you've had the last four weeks, we've only based on 
this book. Act the other uh, way around. Yeah. This is uh, actually little lot of work. Uh, two books. Uh, yes. In one month, actually, <laughs> we I have uh, most of the people have up to 30 credits, and we have to do a lot of things. We have to read a lot of books, assignments. Hmm. Uh, I haven't uh, uh, read the other one, but I will try to read as much as possible in this coming week. I think most of them, it's my guess, more than 50 percent haven't touched the other one. <laughs> Uh, yeah. so, I, uh, so just far. need to so you say that m most students only have one book, or is that what you say? Or have only read one book? Yeah, most of the people are reading this uh, business canvas uh, hmm? uh, book, but not the other one. As uh, I've asked and talked with many um, okay. friends, and the, so. Yeah, then I would definitely recommend yeah. that you read this one. Okay, yes. What? what uh, <laughs> What I can, I mean... This one. If you only read the business model generation, then you also need to read this one. Otherwise, you cannot pass. I will show you in a minute how it works with the test. So, the reason why we've given you the toolbox today is to show you, it's basically a help, it's a perspective or it's a lens that you can read the books uh, with. So, it's not to say that we will only have questions that relate to the models and uh, theories that we've shown you in the toolbox, but at least be familiar with those models. What, uh, what I can tell you is, is how I used to study when I had a lot of books and stuff. You have the toolbox now, and there are a lot of models in the toolbox from the books. Um, not all, but what you can do is, you can take the toolbox and the slides and the book and try to see, okay, what is in the book that is not on the slide, that is relevant, and read. Like, use the toolbox to organize how you do the reading in the book and then see what is in the book that is not in the toolbox and write it on, si on the side of the slides. And then you have everything in the toolbox. And, but that, that is how I started. I can't tell you how to study, but... Um, we use the toolbox to give you a, a structure so that you don't need to read every single page of the book like you're reading a book full of formulas. Uh, the book also explains things and makes examples and so on. So it's not all you need to focus super intensively on each single page. But of course you need to focus and you need to understand what's in the book to pass. Uh, yes. It's a useful tip uh, because, uh, like we discussed before, that uh, we have to read, um, we have to read these two books. And I was looking for kind of tips that how we can, how I can, especially I'm mentioning my myself that I can read and go through all the stuff. It's kind of useful tip that I don't need to go through every single page. What? So it's I I don't know how you read. Yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. So, my husband reads every single word of every sentence that is put in front of him. So, it takes him two hours to read a page. I go through a page, I see what's interesting, I highlight it, and then I take what I, and then I look at the slides, and then I, I take what I've highlighted into the slides if it's not already there. But it depends on the type of reading you do, because if you do the type of reading that my husband does, and you read every single word, and then you try to do what I'm doing, then you're missing all the information. So it depends on the way you study. But what I would suggest that you can do is that you read a chapter for, you take, a, uh, you take the toolbox, you read a chapter that is connected to the model in the toolbox, you see what is interesting here, and then you focus your reading on the things that you think are more interesting in that chapter. Is that, uh, does that make that's, sense? Uh, yeah, that's one way to do it. <laughs> I think, I mean, you have had tests the last four weeks. So if you performed well with the way that you've studied for that test, then I would recommend you to continue that way. If you haven't studied and you've just guessed, maybe you should study. I would recommend that you study for the coming week. But if you have studied as we would expect you to do for every week and you've done the test and you passed well, then I think you are on a good track. And you will get a test today with how many questions? It's uh, all four of them, right? So, yeah, the four old ones. The four, the four that you've already taken, some of you, because we know that not everyone took the test. So now you will have a chance to do it again if you have done it already, or you will have a chance to do it for the first time. 
and then say it's uh, then it's forty. So it's one hundred and sixty questions, right? Something like this. Okay, not as many. So you would um, you will have the time today to practice, and of course you've studied because we've had chapters for every week. So uh, I expect that you this is an afternoon where you can practice so and Im improve even better. So maybe we should go through then the... Um uh, just one thing. The toolbox presentation we did today is a bit different than the one that was uploaded at the beginning of the course because every, every person is different and I tried to create a storyline that made sense to me. So the, the order that you can find in the slide deck that I uploaded this morning on CampusNet, that is the order of today's uh, lecture. And we will take out the old presentation because there are models in there that you don't need to study because they're not in the books. So look at the, at the new one. But the order in which the models are put in the toolbox is an order that just makes this, made the storyline easier for me to tell you. So it doesn't mean that you cannot apply, for example, I think the job characteristics model, I put that in the process part of the star model. But it's also linked to the rewards. I put it where I put it. It's also linked to rewards and people. I put it where I put it because it gave me, it gave me a good link to the other part of the SAR model. It doesn't mean you cannot use the job characteristics model to work on the reward um, system or on the people practice when you do the case analysis. Is this uh, clear? Yes. OK, then. Uh, yeah. I'll so next week. It's 9.30 to 10.30. There will be 25 questions, and uh, I think I will repeat that a few times. So one hour next week, 9.30 to 10.30, we are in three rooms. This room, the neighbor room, and in 116 room 81. And Anna would send out a list or your student numbers in a long list, and you will be able to see where to show up. So when you arrive next week on the Wednesday, let's say quarter past nine, so you're here on time, you would find a seat, and on your seat there will be a paper with a question, and then there will be the scratch-off test attached to it. So show up in the right room, and we will email you which room to be in. So about the test, there are 25 questions. Uh, it lasts for an hour. There are four answer possibilities, A, B, C, and D. And when you think or that you are sure that you find the right answer, you scratch the ma matching field. It counts for 30% of the final mark. Um, can you turn on the YouTube? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I know there's no sound. Yeah. I've shown you this before when we had the first, um, the first day of the course. But basically, just so you see, it's okay, you can leave it on. So, this is what it looks like. If you feel or if you think or you are sure that the first question has the right answer in the D box, then you scratch the D and then you will see a star. So you're right on that one. Then in the second question, if you think, okay, it's A, I'm quite sure it's A, and there's nothing there, and you scratch it, then it will be blank. Then, okay, so it was not A, you think again, and you say, okay, it must be B. So you scratch the B, and then you find a star. And it gives you points, and you put them on the scoreboard next to it. So then you, if you think, ah, maybe I should try to, I'm not sure if it's A or B on the next one, so I try to scratch a bit to see if there's a star beneath. Then they have done it this smart way that they don't put the star in the center of the box. As you can see, they can be in the corner, right or left. Um, so scratch it when you're confident, and if there's nothing there, then you look for the right answer in some of the others. So the idea of this is that you get instant feedback. You know right away if you're wrong or if you're right. And it also means that you receive, you can see your scores uh, on the way. Um, 
So you know your final mark when you leave the room. Can we go back, Julia? Can we go back to the uh, presentation? Thanks. So how come it's not working? No. Okay. No. <coughs> yeah. Then this is the one. Okay. So, if you have the star, if you have your question and it, uh, you say, okay, the right answer is A, and you scratch it, and it's right, and you say, yeah, uh, I, we can't have a lot of uh, cheering in the auditorium, but anyway, you think this, and you're very happy, then you put a five under the score. See the lines on the right? So you put a five there. If you scratch the A in the second question and it's a blank, you think, oh, that was not very good, but then it must be the B, then you scratch the B and it's right, then you get a two. If your third answer is right, meaning that you have two blanks and a star, then you get a one. And if you only get it right in the last one, because of course that's obvious, then you get a zero. So no negative points are given in this exam. So there's a question, yes? Yes, we would put up um, also in a minute how, when, how you count them. Yeah, so you will get this information during the day, on, on Wednesday, yes. But just, so there's a five, there's a two, there's a one, and there's a zero. Um, so, in order to have a 12, you need to have 115 points and you can see, and in order to pass, you need to have 65. That would also be put up on Wednesday. So you can see when you have uh, counted, when you have made the total sum, then you know your mark before you leave. So, remember, so we can give you the right grade to put your name and student number on the scratch card on the top. Um, subject is Timo, your question score and your total score. So your scores on the right and then your total score in the end. And you should not remove the question sheet because each sheet will have a different color because the answers are not in the same order. So it will be A for you or maybe B for you in the same question. So you would have the pink and you would have the blue. So don't take it off. Um, yes. And then we will send out both questions and answers on CampusNet afterwards. So you will be able to see um, how it should have been if you're wrong. So, yeah. You've been divided in the free exam rooms. Uh, the files for each room have, uh, will be uploaded on CampusNet and you will find your student number in the files. Yeah. So. This one, I guess, you would like to know. So what would it require to pass? And what does it require to get a 12? Um, so we start with the 12. If you have 23 right at the first star, then you get a 12. So if you're there, then you know. If you have 22 rights with the first star, and free rights in the second choice, that means one blank and then a star, then you can also get a 12. So think about that when you're there. And in order to pass, you have to get at least 13 rights at the first star, or 10 first, 15 third, and you can see the logic there. So just think of this, you need to get 13 rights to have to pass. So when you have 13 stars in the first one, then you know, oh, at least I've passed this first exam. Yeah? It makes sense? Or I could ask another way. 
Are there any questions to this? If there are no questions, I would expect that it all makes sense. No, there are two questions. Yes? Could I have the cube? Uh, yes. uh, if it unhappily happened that uh, we will not pass this exam, then we have to rotate the uh, course in next semester or how it works. Yeah. If you don't pass the exam this semester mm -hmm. or this, this exam now, then you can continue with the, uh, with the group report and then you can work on that and hand it in and then you can take the test next semester. Okay. But I don't have remember if it's like the re-exam or you just know it's just, yeah, you take it with the other team of course next semester, then you enroll again. But you will not pass this semester. So it will be a fail for the whole semester. You take it again, but we keep your grade from the report. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, there was another question. Can I? Uh... Yeah. Could you ask again? Um. I just wanted to ask how many questions, but she said yeah. 25. So the question is how many questions? There are 25 questions. And they are in both books. They are from both books, both the contemporary management book and the business model generation. Yes? Other questions? We are doing this in this manner because the critique, the feedback that we got last semester was that have a multiple choice test without knowing your mark when you leave is very discouraging and uh, yeah, not very good. So we said we need to find another way of doing the exam and this is a way where you can get, you can see what you've learned instantly and you get your mark so you know when you leave. So I hope this would uh, increase your, you can say, satisfaction or your, yeah, uh, your learning from the course. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, have a nice afternoon with the uh, practicing for the exam and see you next week for the exam.